today we're going to go over the features of Blender's real-time EV viewport and how to render an animation of this scene. EV is a game changer for animators and artists in that you can iterate and experiment with light in real time and you can get final quality renders without needing an expensive farm or equipment or software. We'll be going step by step so if you want to follow along you can get the scene file below and also this video is the last of a 21 part series on building this sci-fi corridor which can also be found below. Okay here we are in 2.8 brand new build from right here I'll have the link below and we're gonna do a little experiment I'm kind of excited this is a uh, an old tutorial the sci-fi corridor and I'm gonna try to open this up so this was done in 2.79 so and it works we're in 2.8 now so it should be usable I hope so anyway we we have a kind of a crazy interface here so I'm gonna close some stuff up I can just drag this corner up like this I can drag this corner up and then down holding down so that was up and down holding and now uh, all right so we're here and I'll have a link for this scene below of course and we have a bunch of new 2.8 stuff down here so this is our rendered view here and it's doing our uh, a regular cycles render but we want to try out the really cool uh, new stuff right so we're going to change this from cycles to EV and now we can see EV I scrub through the timeline here's our little animation and it looks okay it's really really dark here but I mean I can start to see some cool reflections and stuff going on um, so let's see first of all we have some lights in here that didn't really transfer over from the last scene so I'm gonna go work on my lights with a new little feature from 2.8 which is this little funnel filter thing so we can just say turn all this stuff off except for lamps so now I'm going to open up this collection and here's a couple of our lamps. And so this one, we can see that in the old scene, the color was orange and I can hover over that orange color and hit control C to copy it. And then if I go over here to the light tab all the way over here, I can hover over this white color and control V to paste it. So let me do the same thing with the other lamp, control C. Control V, and I'll go down the list here. Control C, Control V, and this one too. That was easy. So now we've got the same light set up pretty much, but it's still kind of too dark. Um, so we can start to add in some light by bringing in some real time reflections. So let's go to the render tab and move down. And once we're in EV mode here, we get a bunch of interesting options down here, so like uh, screen space reflections. So boom, that's already bringing in some, some much needed light here. There's some options. Let's turn off half res. And that's cool. It looks a little bit better. And you can just play around with this stuff, but I think, I think this, this looks pretty decent. Okay, so there's that. Also, these lights have uh, an option to make them a little bit more convincing. So some of the light here looks a bit unnatural um, because it's, it's too bright and there's, there's some of the shadows are not really blocking the things that they should block, like up here. So there's an option. So let's say I have this area 03 selected and I'll go to the light tab again. And right now we're using regular shadows but we can also add on contact shadows, which should help us in these little areas where uh, these little nooks and crannies. So let's go contact shadow. And now it's like kind of overdoing it. We're, we're losing way too much light here. So let's change the thickness down to be a lot lower. Okay. So now I'm just barely starting to see it here in, in, the, in these little holes. 
and over here, which is nice. And we can also change the softness here, depending on the look you're going for. Maybe like that. OK. And then let's do the same thing with these other lights. And I should probably save this right now before it crashes. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'll just call this the same name but with EV on the end of it. Because I don't, I don't want to, I definitely don't want to save over the old file because it might screw it up. So I'm, I'm making a new copy of it. Okay, so let's do the same thing with this um, orange light here. Right. So let me let me go click on the little camera icon. This is also a new 2.8 thing. It's kind of kind of cool. All right. So here's let's let's get a good view of the of the light coming in here. And then we can check out the shadow. That doesn't seem to be doing too much. Oops. Go closer. I'm using um, period on the numpad to zoom in on this lamp. And then let's check out the contact shadow here. That definitely looks way cooler, I think, with the, the shadow there. And then the for the other one, same thing. Yeah, that's definitely nicer. So that should be on by default, guys. Contact shadows, default, please. And then back here, there's an orange lamp right over here. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe a tiny bit. I don't want it to be too strong over on this back one. OK. All right, let's go back to the camera view. Go like this. Great. So let's save this one more time before it crashes. And um, OK, we've got a good start here. I'm going to select this floor by just right clicking on it. And we have our good old texture from before, which is working fine. And this, this color ramp controls the roughness here. So if I drag this around, that'll change how, how shiny it looks. This dark part is the shiny part. The light is the is the rough part right here. So you can adjust that too and see it in real time, which is pretty damn cool. That's um, I could do this all day and just stare at it. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab the this um, wall also. This has another glossy. So the floor is called Metal V, and if I right click on the wall, I get Glossy V2. So this is another one controlling this roughness. And I can play around with that a little bit. Okay, so it's still pretty dark, right? Like I might need a bit more light back here on the, the light that's sort of behind us, which is 0.002. I'm going to try to increase that a little bit. Okay. Man, this is so much nicer than working in cycles because, I mean, you get instant feedback and you know exactly what's going on. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so next we're going to add in something really cool. So Shift-A, let me just actually... Here, I'll click on this overlay so I can see where my 3D cursor is, and then I'll go just left click on the floor somewhere here. Shift A, and let's go down to uh, Light Probe and Irradiance Volume. So there's our little Irradiance Volume. It kind of looks like a grid of cubes, but as soon as I drop that in, it's starting to light up the scene with global illumination bounces. So this is like, it looks like ray tracing, looks like cycles, but it's sort of contained to an area that's around these little sphere uh, probes. Even lights up the outside a little bit. So, all right, so I'm going to try scaling this S, Y to scale it this way, S, Y, G, Y. And I just want it to enclose the whole thing like that pretty much. Okay, so now 
in the light probe we have some resolution options so let's try maybe five five and then can bring this up to about that much and also with these irradiance probes uh, the other thing with this is there's there's another control in here that's not part of the, the probe so we got to go back to render and then indirect light and I'm bringing this down to like one I think I can survive with just one so now we got to wait for a second for all these probes to calculate I mean we put in a good amount so it's gonna take a little while but there it is it's it's freaking that's working okay so back to the camera and bring it in and it's it's subtle but you see that this these panels are getting like this soft uh, glowy type of light which is awesome damn okay so that that pretty much looks 99% like the the uh, cycles render so I'm gonna save this one more time okay so next we're gonna bring in the smoke that comes in from under the floor and it's gonna have a nice uh, floaty eerie mood to it and I think it'll be cool so um, first let's add in those two textures that we created earlier so I'll make a plane shift a plane and this plane will have the texture attached to it. So uh, on the left side, on the node editor, I'll add a new texture or a new material. And here it is. So first you grab this thing, hit X to delete it, shift A, and let's add in two things. We need a diffuse, enter, shift A, transparent, enter, Oh, I lied. One more thing. Shift A, mix, shader. Okay, so now this is going to get crashy, so let me save this off. Um, I'll save it as Smoke 01. Okay, so now we just connect these three up. Good. And Shift A, search. Oh, wait, no, no, don't do that. Now we just grab that texture from earlier. Where is it? Smoke one. So drag smoke one right in here. And then smoke one will uh, control the mixture between the transparent material and the, the regular diffuse material. So we plug this into the factor right here. And uh, we can't see anything yet, but let me save over this. I happen to have crashed through my way through this process and I figured out that you got to go here to um, the material tab and then the blend mode and then alpha blend and it crashes so let's try that one more time sometimes you just got to do it again or you got to do it in a different order for this to work but um, here I'll do it now before we're in rendered mode and let's see if that works alpha blend and uh, transparent shadows hashed okay now don't crash yes Good, very nice, beautiful, and it's, ah, there it is. You gotta do it one more time, alpha blend and hashed. Okay, so it's going. We, we see some of it is transparent, but it's doing the opposite, right, of what we want. So just drag and drop these two to flip them around and pray that doesn't crash. Okay, save, okay. Now, um, this, this smoke is at going the wrong direction, so let me go and I'll press 2 to switch into edit mode, and then R90X. Alright, so, and now I'll press 1 to go back to object mode. And these hotkeys might be changing in the future, guys, so, I mean, it's, well, anyway, you should know how to do this anyway. So, um, yeah, the idea is to have this smoke coming out of these holes here on the bottom. So this will kind of be our first smoke, and we're just testing out the lighting to, to make sure it looks okay. And I think that's good. Um, 
So I'm going to start to give it a little bit of rotation animation, and that, that should make it a little more lively. So let's hit um, over here in the timeline. I'm going to make sure that my timeline is at zero or so. It doesn't really matter. And then over here in the 3D view, I hit I and then rotation. And that creates a keyframe key here on rotation. So let's switch this, bring this down a little bit, and then switch this from down here into a graph editor. And this will give us our controls for rotation. And right here, I'm going to hit X to delete the other two. I only want this one Y rotation. And then Shift D will duplicate that keyframe. Right? You can right click on these two keyframes. But I'll hit A twice to select all of them. And then Shift E, linear. So now this will slowly rotate. I can hit S, Y to scale this line. Shift A. OK, that's a little too fast. I just want a lazy, gentle rotation like this. OK, good. Save that. Let's make a copy of this, this uh, object. Shift D and bring it over to the side. So this one, um, well, let me see. Let me let me uh, go over here and rename this to smoke01. And then right click this one. This is smoke02. And this one, I want to change it a little bit slightly. So let's say we can make it a little bit faster by doing SY or slower if you want. So now these two are rotating at different speed and then also over here, I want to make a new material. So actually, let's first rename this material to be smoke01 material. Fuck. Let's um, go back in here, open that one. I didn't save it. OK, let's call this smoke01m. Call this one smoke01. It's rotating good. Oh yeah, so when you reopen the scene, it might not remember this alpha blend thing, so I just got to re-hit re that in the materials tab. Okay, back here. Save this. Let's um, duplicate this now. Move it over. S, Y. It's okay, you got, yeah, you need to practice. Keep every crash is... Another chance to do to practice, I guess. Thanks, guys. Um, OK, yeah, we're going to change this texture here by hitting the plus. And this will make a copy, right? It says, oh, wait, no, no, sorry. You hit the two. Make Click to make a single user copy. Um, I wish this was easier to understand in layman's terms. But anyway, you click the two, and now we've got smoke 202m and this one let's change the material to to take the other variation of the smoke and save all this okay good so now we've got oops now we've got our variation okay next we're going to put these into a collection so right click this one shift right click the other one hit M, and the, which is for move to collection. And this is a new 2.8 thing. But anyway, we're going to hit new collection and then type in smoke, uh, smoke. That's it. Enter. OK, we can't see. We see the collection, but we can't see the, the objects because we still have our filter on. So let's make sure we got all of our other options on. OK, so now we can see this collection with the smoke and the two smokes. Let's call this one smoke two. OK, good. Save this all again. And now, um, all right, our two smokes are looking good. Next, I'm going to add in a new plane, Shift A, Mesh Plane. And this plane, the idea is that it's going to, this plane will emit smoke. So I'm going to try to change the shape of this plane. So SY. That's why 
gy and I'm, I'm sort of trying to place it underneath here uh, where the light is and these holes because I want the smoke to come out of there okay so now we're going over to the oh, let me rename this also smoke emitter and then go over to the sparkly tab over here on the top right Whoop, and then new particle system and let's crank this down to like a hundred maybe and uh, the lifetime should be about 300 start should be negative 60 normal geometry this is a very important setting this tells it how fast these particles are gonna shoot out of the plane so maybe like 0.1 is enough and then go keep going keep going keep going all the way down to render and there's a group setting which should actually be called collections now but anyway we're gonna select let me save this select a smoke group that, that or that smoke collection and now we see these guys coming out but they're falling uh, like rain it's not good right so the reason this is happening is because of uh, gravity so save one more time let's go over to gravity here's our scene close 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 gravity um, let's just turn gravity off okay there we go nice and lazy nice and lazy okay so this Where's our smoke emitter? Here it is. Um, we have a size option here. Let's make these a lot bigger. We can put some randomness into them. We can grab the rotation here. And that's not too bad. We can make this. This is sort of like a pre roll, which means like the simulation is sort of starting before we even get to the the first frame of our scene um, should be nice to get the smoke going before we're actually in the scene okay and so this is looking a bit heavy to me so I'm gonna try to tweak it one option would be to change the number here to be less see how this looks And, you know, this it's nice for performance to have a little bit less smoke. Let me also turn off this overlay. Okay, not bad. Um, so let me save this here. And uh, so I think it, it looks a little bit um, too low. I, w I want it to be stronger. So I'm going to edit it a little bit. We can go down to the smoke emitter and bring this up to like 40. And the normal, let's try 0.15. The normal is the speed at which the particles are shot out of the, that bottom plane. And then what else? I think that's good enough. Okay, So that looks fine to me. Let's grab this thing. Oh, wait, not that one. The emitter shift D to duplicate it and then Y to push it all the way down that way let's you can hit um, period on the numpad to, to zoom in on it now and that looks better so I just want it to be in front of the door so the spotlight can sort of go over it um, and while we're at it the the spotlights I think are a little bit sharp here so I'm gonna get where is it? Point light. I'm searching for point number one. And in the spotlight options, there's a blend. So let's try like point four, point five, point four. And then there's another one here, right? Where's the other point light? This light. It's point. Let's do the same thing. Point four. Okay, and then when the, the spotlights go over the door, you don't really see anything because it's a metallic material. 
So let me select the door and uh, change it from metallic to non-metallic. Then we can see the light. Also, there's this roughness texture, so we can plug that into roughness and play around with it a little bit. Okay. All right. Also, there's this, this, uh, these cutters from before that were supposed to be um, cut booleaned out of the door. So let's pick this one and then this one. Control J to join them into one object. And then two for edit mode. Let's get a face, control L, and then control I will invert, control F, and then we can intersect Boolean to cut those out. And then grab this again, control L, go to materials and assign it to that metal door, which is not really metal anymore, but that's okay. Okay, let me save this now because we are in a very crashy state right now. So I'll save this as smoke too. Okay. Oops. Let's go back to object mode by pressing one and then just, uh, left click up here somewhere, shift A. And I wanna bring in an extra light here. Jesus, Whoa. Point 0.1 maybe, point zero 0.05. And let's make it orangey. And then you could select off of it and then back on to the, to the light to um, kind of refresh the scene. And I want it up here somewhere. Okay. And maybe a little bit less, like 0 0.04. Let's see how that looks. So this is just a nice little subtle fill light. Um, so we're not going into pitch black here. I think that's nice. Um, okay, I'm gonna duplicate this, Shift D. Oh, that's crazy. G, Y, damn. That's so cool, it looks like a missile flying through the, anyway. I'm still not over, how awesome. This is this real time stuff. It's kind of making animation fun again. Yeah. MAFA. Okay, let's add in uh, that smoke, or I want to bring another smoke over here. So I'll go down. There's our other smoke. Shift D, move it on Y, RZ 90, rotate it 90. G, Y, uh, G, X, S, and I'm scaling. So since we're scaling just the emitter, it's not gonna scale the, the particles, only the, I guess, the space w that they're gonna emit from, which is a nice thing. So we don't have to worry about skewed smoke. And then, let's see, how does that look? Okay, here's that light. Whoa. Interesting. Okay. There's also, wait a minute, that's okay. Put that here. Maybe, yeah, contact shadow again, but now we're losing too much, so we can change the thickness to be like 0.1. Maybe point oh two. Whoa. Cool. Let's check it out. Damn, that's crazy. Um. Oops, wrong one. That's awesome. You can just change the colors while we're watching the movie. It's like, this is, this is unfair. This is cheating. Um, man, okay. Maybe 
These different colors are too much. Check it with overlay off. Okay. Now what else? There's I think there's one more thing I wanna what do I wanna do again? Should probably save the, oh yeah, this light down here. Where is it? The area light here. I think this shadow is too sharp, so let's change it from three to six. Okay, that's good. Now we can save this. Save as uh, smoke three. And we're almost there. So let's go back to the this render tab. And we just have a few settings here. Like resolution, let's crank that up. Step one, this is going to be like if it's going to skip a frame, but I just want it to render every single frame. Uh, let's try 30 frames per second, since we get these super fast frames. And then, yeah, we got to pick a location. Maybe I have a little frames folder, except that. And then you can name it to like uh, corridor smoke underscore. And then there's two options. We can do the FFmpeg, which is a movie, um, or you can do individual frame images, which is a little bit safer, especially if you're if you're getting a lot of crashes. You probably want to try to do it with uh, the images. But I'll I'll gamble a little bit and try with the with the MPEG. And then this this stuff should all work like that. Oh, <sighs> okay. Okay, here's bonus, bonus, bonus section number five million. So, uh, we, you know, we can perfectly render out our animation how we did, but if you want to give it a little bit of a handheld look, we can get some shakiness into the camera. So where the hell is our camera? First of all, here it is in Collection 20. So here's our camera happily moving along. And um, what the camera does not know is that we can keyframe it, hitting I in the viewport with rotation. And now we have controls for, um, we can animate the rotation of it. So let's go, we can hit that little plus thing here. And by the way, we are in the graph editor, if you didn't know. And under modifiers here, let's turn off everything else. So this Z rotation where does it live? Where does it live? Ah, here it is. You can hit period on the numpad to zoom in on it. Okay, so add modifier, noise, and let's play that. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Maybe point two here. If you drag this out, you'll see that they have labels like scale. Okay, maybe 40 here. There we go. That's a little bit more reasonable. There's also an offset. See what the offset's doing. Okay, that's what the offset's doing. Phase. Okay. All right, we can also just move the entire line. So let's move it more towards the center. Or maybe just a tiny bit turned. All right, and then we can do the same thing here. Noise, let's see, see what it looks like. Oh yeah, perfect. 40, mm-hmm, maybe like 0.2 here. Just the subtle little vomit-inducing shake. Maybe this one can be a little bit less, like 0.4. Let's change the offset here. Uh, this huge peak here, I think, is like a little bit much in the in the beginning. Yeah, there we go. And then. X rotation. Is this one going to be useful at all? Mm. 
point two here. Let's see. If, let's see. This is like a drunk spaceman. Do they have alcohol in space? I don't know. I guess these guys probably get lonely after a while. I don't know about that that kick in the beginning either. Like right here. Oops. I'm gonna try to start off a little bit more even, like right here. And then that way. Okay. I guess that's good. Okay. I think that's it guys. Now we can do the real deal render. I promise this is the last last time I'm gonna add another bonus section. Oh wait, I need to save this. Don't crash. Don't crash. Okay. I lied, there's one more thing. Motion blur. Bloom. Bloom is cool. Let's go down here. And uh, intensity maybe like point two. And the threshold a little bit higher. Like that. Okay. Bloom. You just gotta be careful with bloom because sometimes it'll make little sparklies or fireflies. But okay, and then motion blur. It's looking good. And finally we have uh, over here in the scene settings there's color so we can change this we can add curves in make it sort of greenish and you can I mean these other ones are pretty f fun too like film gives you like a vintage uh, John Carpenter or some kind of creepy book Anyway, I'm gonna go with filmic so we can, can get all the details and then maybe like high contrast. And with this curves, I like that we're getting a little bit of green tint to it. Okay, I just went in and tweaked a bunch of stuff, but I'm ready to go now. File, open GL, render animation. And I'll do JPEGs. File, open GL, render animation. 